Hi everybody, Masquerade part 8, oh, 1, 2, 2 injections this morning, last tetanus, last booster, got to be good, fans are off, roosters are asleep, cats are asleep, let's recap, Craig, Irish lorry driver, looking for a ladyboy companion so this will be his second after the experience at the hotel he's in a pool hall in Ceylon a couple of streets back maybe one street back from the night market Pat Pong night market upstairs in a pool hall a lot of girls and lady boys around he's had a game of pool and lost Got several lady boys sat each side of him, but one's catching his eye across the the pool hall. Not that tall. Hair down to sort of shoulders, but dead straight. Like they straighten their jobs to make it dead straight. Attractive, slim. Keeps catching his eye. Another game where he's sat, plays another game, loses again. Twenty pat a game. Anyway, he keeps looking at this girl. Let's just call her A, or Adam, or Andy. No, let's just call her A. They keep, yeah, all the girls and lady boys are looking across at all the foreigners in there, or any guy that's in there, potentially looking for a partner for the night. Anyway, this A, keeps clocking him as well he finishes game get loses again anyway this a sort of waves him across and sort of come and points to the table that she's on and he's like hmm yeah the hostess like, running around getting the drink she she spots him spots the signals she says grabs his drink grabs his pot his bill bin walks across with him and it's at the side where the windows are you can look through the windows down at the soy uh, and there's also like a glass bridge going across to another shop or something bar or he goes across and the hostess puts his uh, drink on like a round table there small round table quite high uh, and the bin and she sort of stands back and they say she's not on the table playing she puts her hand out and shakes his hand speaks quite good English, a bit broken but quite good and they just start chatting, introducing each other to, you know, Craig, stop, you know, I'm Craig, nice to meet you um, and the hostess says, do you want to play, put your name on the board and he's like, can I not play on a separate table, just me and A he said, no, all the tables are taken, people are waiting and A says, it's finished drink and she points out the window across the road, downstairs there's two, three beer bars there, and there's one table you can see, and there's no one on it. She said, we can play there. He says, great. So, hostess, Bill, and they say, shouts for her bill as well. He's not that much of a gentleman because he didn't pay a bill. Paid his. Yeah, off they walk, down the stairs, across the road to this bar, walks in, no one at the table. And uh, he said, come check if we can play on our own. We haven't got a cue. And they say, talks to the... Oh, go back to sleep. Talks to this woman behind the bar. And like, can we play for a while? Just us. Yep, yeah, no problem. 20 bar a game. Hey, he orders drinks and A has a beer. <laughs> and uh, let's call it a singer. <laughs> and... Um, I see Ava Chang, yeah. <laughs> right and real. Three roosters. I'm now nicknamed them K, F and C. So they grab the drinks, park up next to the pool table, and uh, just start playing pool, getting to know each other, chatting away. A seems lovely. Now, Craig's starting, now he's 
he's had a lady boy experience he's starting to look at the differences how you can tell a lady boy from a girl I mean obvious signs big feet big hands Adam's apple just a look hair is it real is it a wig breasts enlarged or is it um, from pills and things he starts to look but this, this A is definitely had a boob job uh, very attractive anyway they play they play for a maybe a good hour chatting getting to know each other and A asks him about his experiences she actually says do you know I'm uh, not a girl and he's yep yeah, yeah and he's sort of glad because <laughs> that's what he wants to experience another lady boy um, is there another word for lady boys apart from katoi which I believe is a bit derogatory she girls I don't know anyway we're just gonna say lady boys seems to be the politically correct way he uh, tells her all about Nid Nid and what happened and then how he ended up going with his first lady boy told her pretty much everything um, and A was most impressed oh Kirby has appeared to annoy me she had the kittens still full of milk she zooms in on the tripod every time Kirby why did I name her Kirby in all way trying to tell a story A tells him a bit about her background and um, they just get on great they just really do then comes crunch time I mean it must be getting on a bit sort of late in the evening and Craig thinks yep yeah, this is uh, this is the girl and he says to A um, will you spend the night with me and A very diplomatically comes around to the finances and they agree on a price of about 2,000 baht um, Craig never actually told me the exact figure so I'm just going to guess about 2,000 baht and A's happy yeah we've done a deal you know they got, well, they've done a deal and uh, She asks where his hotel was and he tells her and uh, okay so she already knew which end of the road to go to get the taxis to go back in that direction to the hotel so that uh, was good pay the bill he pays the bill this time walk up the end of the road hail a taxi a taxi meter off to the hotel pull up at the hotel and uh, they both shuffle out the passenger side Craig pays the taxi driver and hand in hand they almost skip through the revolving door of the hotel as they go through the revolving door of the hotel to your right hand side pretty much a good long desks for the reception it's a bit of a seating bar area to the left um, and then a bit further down on the left is a seating area for coffee and things and then I think there's an internet cafe just after that come through the doors I think Craig comes through first A comes through he sort of pulls her through and as they get through the doors Craig stops in his tracks and stops A his receptionist to his right right in front of him 20 meters sat in a chair staring straight at him is going to be a very hard cliffhanger for you I'm going to change things up a bit and I'm going to tell you another story and I'm going to keep you waiting on this I want to try something else 
in a small village northern north eastern section of Thailand not far from Konken Udon Thani in a district by the name of Surin um, small village outside of Surin really even smaller is a family a mother and father uh, only child a son Martin and this is a, a story about Martin Martin between the age of 8 and 12 realized he was a bit different from the other boys he didn't like the boyish games he would rather try and play with the girls mind you all the boys wanted to play with the girls but he wanted to play with the girls and maybe play girly games he was going through that uh, last section of the junior school mum loved him he helped around the house loved cleaning loved doing chores his father was a, a member of the council local government had a very a reasonably good job wasn't huge pay but reasonable and they had a a townhouse they lived in it was a double townhouse and at the front of the one townhouse um, the mother sold some bakery products and it was just like a bit of a shop she did part time uh, in the daytime and Martin would help out as well when he was home this story about Martin it's uh, it's we're going to accelerate it and uh, try and understand what happened to Martin going forward he reached secondary school the equivalent of secondary school 12 years old it was um, a little bit further it was a bus journey away from home to get to school 20 minutes on the bus it was a uh, like a government uh, uh, bus service that the family had to pay a little bit of money for but it was subsidized so not too bad Martin arrived at this the, the secondary school at 12 years old and for the next first few years um, settled in okay he did know some bit from his area went to the same school and met a lot of new friends but again was not socializing with the boys more with the girls quite in a quite feminine way he knew as he was approaching his teens that he was different something wasn't quite right in his mind he he met a couple of other children as he sort of got to 14 15 that were the same as him but they dressed more feminine it was a just an average public school so there wasn't strict um, rules in place about hair and dress it was quite a poor area but even so it was a, a basic uniform but he did meet some other boys and other boys at the same age as him 14, 15 were exploring girls as in boyfriends, girlfriends and but he wasn't interested in that way he had no feelings sexually towards girls at all and these other boys he met were the same and a couple of years older than them maybe they were six formers they were 16, 17 that had stayed on at school for further education were boys that were wearing girls clothes and acting like girls but 
not you know not not gay not well, not maybe not knowing if they were gay or not but potential lady boys as in a girl that's been as I possibly see it as a girl that's been born in a boy's body trapped in a boy's body that wants to get out um, and Martin as he 15 16 more and more time at home doing chores with mum didn't really go out and about like dressing up at home in slightly different clothes and Martin's mum she knew she she had the feeling she could that she just knew that Martin wasn't right wasn't happy he was different his father wasn't really interested um, but the mum tried talking to Martin about it and Martin was open and honest about being you know 15 16 something wasn't right and he didn't feel like he was a boy he felt started feeling like he was a girl and wanted to act like a girl wanted to dress like a girl and spoke to mum about it in the small village it was there was no other lady boys as such and the father would have not agreed with it and would have possibly lost face in the village being there was no other ones no other lady boys about or no other people that were gay or not and the mum suggested to Martin that he'd only got a couple of months left at this school at 16 at which point he could go fend for himself move away and go to college now one of the things over the last year or so in Martin's school they they started doing drama Martin excelled at drama Martin started to absolutely he fell in love with music and the idea of dancing a bit like the Billy Elliot story even though he hadn't done any dancing um, in his mind and maybe the other boys girls had, had mentioned it or something and at 16 he was very sensible very very grown up for his age he would studied hard and done really well at school pretty much in the top 10% of his every class his dad was very happy come to the end of the 16th year all the exams he passed them all with flying colors he asked mother about options and what he could do did she have any ideas he'd never really been away from home away from the village she wasn't really too sure but she said maybe you could ask at school maybe they could go together talk to some of the teachers and see if there's any information about and he did he asked around at the other boys and girls and things and the mother did go to the school with him and they, they did some career advice similar to most countries. There was a few colleges, not university, a few colleges, public colleges, with the grades Martin achieved that he could go to in Bangkok. And some of the major cities, maybe Konkan had something, maybe Udantani but the Bangkok sort of scary for a 16 year old boy to go it alone they had no relatives in Bangkok nothing the mother said to Martin look we can't afford to pay for your college and things you'd have to get a job to pay for your college but I'm sure if I spoke to your dad and we didn't tell him about your feminine feelings and we kept it between ourselves maybe your father and me could afford to pay for your accommodation a room I mean outside of the center away from the center you could get a room maybe 2,000 baht or share a room that's a bit bigger with a person especially if you have someone from the college how much was the college going to be they made inquiries and 
it wasn't a huge amount of money it was about equivalent to a thousand baht a week but there was, it was drama it was college art drama went on to dancing and various other arts and performances there was a a two year, a three year, four year courses available. Now one of the things Martin loved was chores around the house and things. So he already had it in his mind that he'd like to be in some sort of retail job where he's cleaning and tidying up and left alone. He didn't want to manage his job or anything big. Just something he could pay enough money to pay for the college and food. The day came where mum and dad had a conversation. Dad was proud of Martin, done all these great exam results. And the fact that Martin wanted to go to the college and wanted to go it alone, wanted to go to Bangkok. The dad totally agreed, was happy to pay for Martin's accommodation. And surprised the mum up to three, four thousand baht a month, which is a fair wedge out of his salary. But he was so excited that Martin was going to go on and improve his career but when Martin said that the college he wanted was arts and performance and drama the father wasn't really <laughs> that impressed thought he was going to go on maybe to business school or something but it was going to be for a degree or bachelor's or master's degree so it still was going to be good so the father like yep yeah, happy um, and suggested that uh, the family, they would go down and spend a few days in Bangkok and try and enrol him with the college that he wants to go to. He said that he would pay as well for the first same month on top of this accommodation to get it all started. So time for Martin to find a job. Brilliant. And to go down for a few days and uh, have a search around the college area maybe find uh, some accommodation see what what's what maybe the college had some accommodation anyway they did so martin 16 years old family goes to bangkok they find the college there was a choice of two they went for one that was outside of bangkok on the west side and managed to get him enrolled and it was about 1100 baht a month three or four thousand baht to him. They didn't have accommodation at the college um, but there was lots of notices up. All the local people who live around colleges they put rooms for rent up on the board then they're, they're not daft and there was plenty of rooms 1500, 2000, 2500 baht and the father suggested look just get one 2000 baht for now you might meet someone and you can get a room together a bigger place and Martin agreed. So while they were there, they had a, a night out. Next day they took all the phone numbers and went and looked at rooms. And within a couple of hours, they would found a room that was half a kilometre away. And the college was on a main road, a main thoroughfare road, two lane road each side. And there was quite a lot of busy retail area as well. Found a room pretty quick and Martin was happy, Dad was happy, Mum was happy. They spoke to the owner of the, it was actually a, um, a townhouse again like they lived in with four rooms for rent in the townhouse and a bit of a shared front area where someone could park a car and a, there was a bit of a table and seats but not much else. There was a shared shower but as Martin's father said you just get a bit been in there, put water in, have a shower in her own room. Yeah, whatever, no problem. Father paid all the money to the uh, owner. Um, it was just a case of pay one month in advance. Got all the phone number off the owner and uh, they sorted Martin out with a mobile phone, a SIM card, a bit of pocket money. Got Martin a bank account and so that the father could in emergency put money in there he got the bank account of the house owner transfer every month money for the rent so it was guaranteed the owner was very happy and there was only one other person in this house at the time there were still two empty rooms and that was it 
they set Martin up pretty well. Um, he was on his own, he got to find a job. He was about five hours from home in Surin. Maybe four and a half. And planned to get back home after he got a job and a bit of money, depending on what the job was. So they were all happy. Off mum and dad go. Martin is on his own. And at this point, he has the opportunity. In his mind, he's thinking that from this moment, he wants to change his clothes to girls' clothes. He wants to change his hair, let it grow. And he's not sure if he's gay. He's not sure if he wants, he, he, he wants a woman's body. He's not sure, he's confused. 16 years old and now on his own straight away he needs food out he goes explore the road explore the area so he heads off there's a, a big supermarket one kilometer up on the right a big sea supermarket and shops there's loads of little shops all the way along restaurants cafes salons and he's just walking he's literally just come out of his room he's walking along heading away from the college trying to find somewhere to sell roosters to now going along the road and <laughs> fate a couple of bus stops shops right next to the bus stop a bit of food for sale there in the window of a salon help wanted and it says a student's okay um, part-time he's just he's just okay why not let's find out he, sensible lad very sensible he just walks straight in it's a ladies salon it's uh, aimed at ladies There's one girl there cutting hair and nobody else, but there's two other chairs. And he says he's seen the sign and what's the job and the, the girls, ladies, I'm sorry, I don't know, you need to see the boss. She's out back tomorrow morning. Come back, 10 o'clock or whatever. He's like, okay, thanks. Out he comes. So nearly fake stepping in. <laughs> and he off he goes, gets food, has a look around. He's going to need some bits and pieces for his room, but not much. Thai people tend to live out and eat out all the time. So he's going to need a plate and some cutlery maybe and uh, cups and things, but he'll sort that out the next day. He's got three or four days before the college starts. Um, and he's got to learn his way around the college, etc. Next morning, Goes out, gets some breakfast. Chicken soup. <laughs> Goes to the salon. Walks in. There's three ladies in there. Anyway, the first girl you saw the night before recognised him and she was at the front chair. And she turns around to the other woman and said, Oh, this boy. On about the job. And Martin, he's still sort of dressed like a boy but his voice he's making it trying to make it more feminine as it happens for him the lady who owns the shop and uh, runs it is a lady boy I'm going to call her B face again for Martin. Martin says hello and B sort of puzzled looking at him. You're a boy. She said the job here is cleaning up, making drinks for us, making drinks for the customers. Um, whatever else we want you to do, go for stuff and uh, a Thai gopher. Go for this and go for that and help out in the shop. It's not a big huge shop but it's got 
three hairdresser seats and mirrors and there's sinks and things and she said if you like it and we like you maybe we'll teach you bits and pieces of hairdressing Martin's trying to put the feminine voice on not he's not doing a very good job and he's excited and said he'd love the job and B's she's just looking at him and puzzled and you're a boy why do you want to work in a hairdresser's and he's like I'm not really a, 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 a boy boy I'm not masculine I'm I'm different <laughs> that's probably the first person he said that to and B sort of hmm and she says well it's part time you're at college here I take it <clears throat> in Thai they're only speaking he doesn't speak English and he's yeah I start in three or four days time doing drama and art all the rest of it I don't know what the hours are yet and she said well I pretty much know she said but do you you want to how much do you want to work do you want to work every day four days five days six days seven he said I need to pay for the college and my food um, so probably a lot <laughs> and B's explained it it's not huge money but it's probably a couple of hundred maybe 150 baht a shift I'm in a full day for a, this is a few years ago so this is 10 15 years ago so the average salary then in jobs was probably 250 baht a day so it's probably a hundred and hundred baht a day maybe 150 but he could earn enough to pay for the college and food and live and B seemed to understand and knew roughly she must have had students there before that and the prices and things. anyway she agreed to sort him out and for him to just start and see how he gets on but do a few days aim for six days a week because Sundays uh, he needs to study probably but they, if he wants to work seven they can because the shops open seven but they're not always there all three of them and the, she introduced him to the other girls um, he showed him around and said you've got a few days now to get ready for college you probably don't want to work in a day but start at five o'clock tomorrow and the next day and your college will finish about 3, 3.30 do 5 o'clock through till we finish could be 9, could be 10 so come back tomorrow for 5 and work for me he's landed a job just like that excited leaves the premises heads back to the room phone mum not dad, phone mum tells her that he's got a job in a hairdresser's just cleaning up mum's really excited over the moon and uh, brilliant Craig's come through those doors with a they stood there right in front of him sat in the chair 20 meters as clear as day as lighting's good in the hotel who is it yeah we know who it is it's Nid and Nid stands up spots Craig instantly stands up and walks towards him faster than he's walking towards her he's saying to um, the current girl with him a this is that Thai girl that I was seeing and had a problem with in a split second before Nid had come towards him and he's like <sighs> she stood right in front of him looking at a and with a dirty look Craig's pretty speechless, he doesn't know what she's going to say, he's wondering what she's doing there. He'd given her 10,000 baht to go away and back to Patea. What's she done? Has she gone and just blown it in the area and not gone back? Or has she gone with another guy and now she's got no guy? 
what's she doing what's she here for and for those people no she's not pregnant <laughs> for those of you who said she's pregnant she says to him all apologies how sorry she was she understands what had happened to him with the other lady boy and that she she realizes that she loves him so much she doesn't love the older guy that's given her loads of money and she says that she would love to finish with that guy and spend time solely with Craig and that she loves him and she's looking up at him with sort of imaginary tears in her eyes Craig's he's just not interested he is looking down at her he's not much taller than her but he's he's looking at her and he's and he's saying I'm not interested I'm now trying other things I told you I would email you once I got home he's going home the the next evening the, the next night one more day he's going back to Ireland end of his holiday and he said, I'm not, I'm busy, I'm, I'm not coming back to you, I'm, I will email you in the future, I'm now doing other things, so I'm sorry, I don't know why he's saying he's sorry, he's just, he's, I'm sorry. Now, Nit at this point would normally have a huge turn and turn angry and start throwing things at him. That would be the normal. But she didn't. She she actually didn't. She then she starts to get please. I would. I want you. And she off again. And he's no. He stands his ground. I'm sorry. I'm not. No. Nope, it's not happening. She'd been there for probably hours waiting for him. And he says that he says go back to Patea go back to that guy I, when I come back I'll email you so let you know I'm back and maybe I'll come and see you I think at this point she gave up she's like ah oh. she didn't attack him she didn't go berserk she gave the girl with him a, a really dirty look and she just said fine and instead of walking around him to stomp off or walking around A she just pushed them out of the way and walked through the middle of them um, straight through the middle of them, barged through fine, had a huff, a little bit of a huff and off she went huge, huge relief from Craig and he looks at A and says I'm sorry and A's like don't worry, no problem and he walked over to reception the girl from reception sort of looks at Craig and looks at his A knowing that A's a ladyboy and sort of smiles he gets his key again no security, no request for ID cards at that hotel or nothing and uh, his adventure begins for the night off they go to the room and at uh, 8.30 in the morning A is dressed and ready to go and leave she'd already twigged when he said that he was going that night late that night he was going back to Ireland so there was no point in trying to get another date with him it was pointless so he said goodbyes to Craig, uh, he gave her some money and uh, he'd had another experimental night, wasn't the same as the first girl, lady boy, different again, but he enjoyed himself, he, the experience was more relaxing 
than his normal previous encounters with women. He was comfortable in what had just happened. He <sighs> grabbed his uh, clothes and was going to head down to breakfast, so he said to her, I'll walk you out. Gave her money, kissed her goodbye. They went down in the lift, out to the doors, said goodbye. He got a his phone number, line ID, wasn't around in those days, but phone number and uh, email address. Said maybe he'd contact her next time he was in Thailand. There was no definite plans to come back to Thailand, but thought, you know, maybe he would. I don't know at this point. Anyway, walks to the door, says goodbye, off she goes, goes off, breakfast, reasonably nice breakfast, a sort of buffet breakfast, he sat there eating his breakfast, mulling over, life, he was flying home that night, he'd had a few weeks and it had been a complete life changer in some ways, this holiday. He was sat with the window behind him, the main road behind, table, almost finished. And he looks across and there's a girl from the reception that uh, stands on this little desk, gets your room number as you come in to make sure that you, whether you're paying or it's free breakfast, his was included, so. Um, and he looked across at this girl checking in people and there stood giving her room number was a beautiful woman with no bandage on her neck mm. back to Martin he started college and we'll skip a little bit forward he was enjoying the work and B the lady that ran the salon was a lady boy I started realizing and helping Martin understood what Martin was going through she'd gone through it and over the next year it had become apparent that Martin, in fact, was a woman trapped in a lady's body, in a man's body, and wanted to be a lady. B helped him, helped him start to change his life. In the year, there was another boy at college in exactly the same boat, same position. Martin and this boy got on really well, so much so that he moved out of the room he was in. They found a bigger place, an apartment that they could afford between them. And it was perfect, so they were going to go through the transition together. Um, this other boy had got a job at a fast food restaurant. And they were going to go through college together. Martin changed his name, his clothes, he started dressing feminine in women's clothes, changed his name to Maddie, M-A-D-D-Y, Maddie. His mother understood, was sympathetic and fine, but insisted if he came home at any weekends, that he'd have to come home as a boy which was tricky because Maddie wanted to grow hair long start taking pills to change hormones and to grow a female breast and but it was gonna have to be gonna have to wear a hat with hair under the hat and stuff to go home and see dad he, he, he somehow managed it but in that first 
well, through that first year, Martin, Maddie, and B, the boss at the hairdress, discovered that Maddie had a knack with hairdressing. A real, real knack. In fact, B started coaching Maddie in hairdressing and it's confusing talking about Maddie and Martin. We're going to have to call Martin Maddie from now on. And Maddie was picked it up really quick. Definitely had an artistic streak in her, Maddie. Martin is now a woman in the story. Really, really good at hairdressing. Um, and B has become a coach, a mentor about changing sexuality across becoming a woman helps Martin and his friend his friend came to visit when he wasn't working and within the start of the second year Maddie was so good at hairdressing B gave Maddie a considerable pay rise a considerable it was a, a good salon was always busy and gave Maddie a chair um, and Maddie started cutting hair to a high high standard really high standard it was almost unnatural and over that second year um, just got better and better and better so much so the clients were coming in people were coming in asking to take that rooster away to, to cut their hair and the money was just getting better and better Maddie was saving really hard was buying more clothes girls clothes but was saving really hard 18 years old now over the next two years Maddie went through the college, she passed everything with top marks, she learned dancing, she learned drama, she had this dream to be a dancer. Now, as she's realising changing into a woman, she's starting to think what job she could do as a dancer. She starts dreaming of it all the time. But more importantly, she wants to change her body a bit more permanent saving hard really really hard after a couple of years 20 years old Maddie's friend had moved away Maddie was just in her apartment on her own but could afford it was working hard doing great hairdressing earning lots of money for you know, for a standard hairdresser was saving so hard the first thing she spent savings on and she had more than enough for it after B's advice was a breast implant and that's what she did she went to a good hospital paid quite a bit of money probably 50,000 baht back then had a breast implant it took a good year to get used to it maybe longer but again Maddie just kept getting better and better hairdressing she was B's angel B was earning more money because Maddie was getting extra clients in she could have easily Maddie could have easily gone to her she was that good, she could have gone to one of the proper salons, of the big salons in the centre of Bangkok maybe, and maybe earned a lot more money, but it was still really good money she was earning. But she was getting older, she had not had any form of sexual contact with another person. She was what, 21 coming on, 22? No idea. 
um, and B started to coach her and teach her about that sort of thing and that Maddie would probably want a boyfriend anyway jumping again a couple more years go past she's 24 coming on 25 B's coached her and she's had a few Thai boyfriends or encounters not long term relationships 100% sure that she is a lady and the dream of dancing it's just eating her away and she takes a step she's 24 25 she decides that she's going to try to get a dancing job now that she is transforming into a ladyboy, she's thinking of the ladyboy shows. She's visited them on day trips and things. She's seen some of them. She's in the scene, talking to people. She's now got the skills from the college, but she just needs the looks. She's had the breast implants. She talks to B and B's, well, the next thing you've got to do is shave the Adam's apple and a nose job and she says to me that look I want to do this but I'm then gonna go on another step and remove the male organ I'm then gonna go somewhere and try and get a dancing job I want to try it it's my dream and B gonna lose a great hairdresser but really supportive and it's like I understand You've saved enough money for all of this. This operation is going to cost you this and this and this and that. And yeah, Maddie had saved hundreds and hundreds of thousands of baht from just working so hard every day. So B helps Maddie. Um, Maddie didn't have much stuff in her apartment. She hadn't bought loads of stuff. She'd saved her money. She said, I'm going to move out, I'm going to get these operations, stay in a hotel, get a rest, do the next operation, and then I'm going to move, I'm going to try Phuket, and B's like, I've got some friends there, gave her addresses, names, phone numbers, and said I'll also contact them, to save money she's going to move out of the flat, and she's just going to go and have the ops, get a cheap hotel, and she does. She says goodbye to B. She moves out of the flat. She goes to the hospital. She has the Adam's apple operation and she has the nose operation. It's um, one day each in the hospital. She checks into a hotel, sort of a three star. And after those two operations, she's at the hotel relaxing she has a bit of an encounter at that hotel with some guy a foreigner and then she's off back to the hospital for the next stop which is going to be she's gone for a better hospital it's going to be a three day so she's checked out of the hospital, uh, hotel three day with recuperating paid for a package and uh, off she goes to have the male organ removed and she does she um, has the op recovering as the three days hospital and then goes back to the hotel she was at before checks in the night time quite late in the morning She's going to probably have a week there to recover properly and go back to hospital checkups. In the morning, she comes down for breakfast and she's scared, happy, confused. She goes to the breakfast lady, gives her a key number, walks through and starts to look for a table. And as she turns left and looks across the room, 
there's Craig looking at her with the biggest smile on his face you could imagine Craig's there she's just come into the hotel she's in the breakfast he stands up walks across a bit nervous and says I thought I'd never see you again you went and you're back and Maddie's like hello can I join you I think we ought to leave it there did you expect any of that <laughs> comments below as usual see you soon bye <laughs>